All right, uh, so this is an introduction to Volk for those that uh, don't know what it is. So I'm Nathan West. Uh, I work at the US Naval Research Lab, and I also go to Oklahoma State University. Uh, so Volk is kind of strange in that some people in the SDR community, and especially computer science, seem to know a lot about SIMD already, and it, uh, just optimizations and numerical computing. Uh, other people coming from a more RF side basically don't know anything. They don't really care. They just need things to run fast. Um, so this is more aimed at people that don't know what Volk is, but can hopefully benefit from knowing something about it. Uh, so it is the vector optimized library of kernels. Um, the CJ, yeah. So uh, it has three priorities. Uh, there are collaboration, compa compatibility, and speed. And uh, I have an outline in a little bit, but I'm basically going to go through those three priorities in sort of reverse order um, because they're actually pretty uh, similarly important to each other. Um, but there's also these other ways that you can view Volk. Um, and for now, for most people, you can just consider it a library of functions that you can call from UniRadio or whatever other application you're using. And your math will just hopefully be faster. Uh, so real quick, a little bit of organization notes. It's technically a sub-project of GNU Radio. If you ever check out GNU Radio or clone GNU Radio, and then you get a build failure because Volk was not found, sorry about that. It's a sub-module, uh, which means that you have to do the git clone recursive. Um, I maintain it, so I want to make another quick note right here. Um, sometimes people think that I wrote Volk or I made Volk. That's not true. Um, I have written some of the code in there, and now I mostly just accept pull requests and reject pull requests when people write bad code, uh, and then fix bugs sometimes. All of the code is GPLv3, Copyright Free Software Foundation. Uh, there's a couple of kernels where I guess they're not GPLv3, but they're some compatible license, and you're able to just copy and paste them in. Uh, it's all based out of GitHub. So if you just go to the GNU Radio GitHub, it's on slash Volk. And that's where all the code uh, issues and pull requests will go through. All right, so we're going to go through speed, compatibility, and collaboration. Those are the three priorities. And um, the goal is really just to make people more familiar with Volk here and introduce it. So let's start with some benchmarks. Um, so Here's some benchmarks that I presented a couple years ago from when I added Neon support to, uh, to Volk. Uh, the axes here, one is essentially the time that it took. So this is all time on the x-axis normalized to the time that it took the generic kernel uh, to run. So this is just the straight C version of something. So for example, we have a, at the top left here, we have a 32f inv square root. So what that's doing is it has a vector of floats that are 32 bits, and we're just taking the inverse square root um, of every number in that vector. So the generic version took some amount of time. Who cares what the absolute time was? Normalize that to one. And just writing some neon intrinsics to do that uh, results in code that's twice as fast. So that's pretty great. Uh, now everyone can call inverse square root whenever they need to do one, and you get uh, two times speed up. So there's a couple of other interesting benchmarks here that I want to point out uh, that'll be relevant for the rest of the talk. Um, one of them is this conjugate. Uh, so someone shout out, what is a uh, conjugate in a floating point representation? Yeah, it's literally you flip a bit, and that's it. So compilers know this already. So when you write a, like a C code to just do a conjugate, they already know that you're flipping one bit. And so it's already very fast. So this is the one case, or one of the few cases, where the Volk version is just ever so slightly slower than the generic version. The reason for that is you're literally just seeing the overhead of calling Volk, um, I think. Uh, there's not much there. Uh, it's basically within a statistical measurement error, so it's not really a big deal. Um, the other is 
this uh, magnitude is kind of interesting, mostly because um, the orc version is slower. Uh, I find that nice. Uh, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, the other one that's interesting here is the top right. We have a 32-bit complex floating uh, dot product. Um, so the generic version is, so there's the soft float and hard float versions. I'm not going to get into that. But all the neon versions are just sort of slightly faster, uh, except for the neon HF and the neon SF. The reason is those are written with what's called intrinsics. Um, and uh, so this is a direct lead into the next slide, which is a disassembled complex dot product. So uh, I've snipped out the actual dot product code here. This is just a C version of, like the generic version, disassembled. And what you see here is some really, the compiler actually did the right thing. Uh, but there's still some inefficiency, inefficiency in here. So look at uh, the addresses here, R8, uh, sorry, R11. So R8 has the address of the vector that we're going to load into memory and do the dot product on. The compiler decided that it should copy that address into a different register, use that register to load up data, and then still operate on R8 to do the address increment. So that's just not that fast. So even if you do the right neon code, the compiler, even with all of this optimization, will still emit some wonky code where you're doing these inefficient movements of uh, uh, addresses. And so that's why you see a very subtle speed up here, is we essentially have the same math code that's in there. It's just that doing it by hand, you can get out that little extra bit. All right. So that's sort of the speed reason of why uh, we would use Volk or why it exists. Um, there's also a sort of a historical point that uh, Junior Radio, one of the first applications was to do uh, di uh, digital television. And because of that, they, the very early authors and cr contributors were writing SSC code. So if you can download Junior Radio version 0.9.2, and there are SSC dot products in there because it was that important to get the acceleration. And we're still seeing it today that uh, it's still useful for us. Uh, the problem is when you write this code optimized for, for example, Neon, it's completely worthless on any x86 machine. And even if you have different compiler flags, you can still take that code that I wrote for Neon on ARM processors, and it will still occasionally fail to build. Uh, so they'll there are a couple ways of fixing that. One is you can have these if-def fences where you say, if we're on ARM, then uh, you need to do this thing. If we're on x86, you need to do this thing. And that gets a little unwieldy. Um, the other option is you can have these meta compilers. So uh, they essentially introduce this other language that is more streamlined for doing SIMD. And um, it's just another abstraction layer, and it has this other language that you have to write all of your code in. That's a little awkward. One of the ones that we have support for in Volk is called ORC. Uh, and the reason I like this benchmark is because ORC, just because you write your implementation in this other language, doesn't actually mean that it's going to be faster. Uh, so here's an example of that happening on the magnitude. Uh, so uh, Volk sort of takes care of that for you. There's still if def fences in all of the implementations, but they're nicely handled in, in this build system. Um, so yeah, so more abstractions. So Volk def like has a pretty clear definition of what, what its abstractions are. Uh, there's two, there's the arc and the machine. Uh, so let's see, we'll go a little bit faster here. So um, the architecture essentially defines a very specific SIMD implementation or architecture. So AVX, Neon, SSE, those are all different architectures. And uh, they usually have some compiler flag and alignment restrictions that go along with them. So there is this file in Volk that defines what all of these are. There's an, 
machines are collections of architectures. So, uh, for example, if you bought an i7, what are we at, 4800 series CPU now, it would have uh, AVX, AVX2, SOC, and all of its variants, and that would be a machine. So uh, here's what a typical function name would look like in Volk. Uh, it's broken up into these various parts. You can have Volk out of tree modules, just like you can have GNU Radio out of tree modules. So that's why you can have a Volk namespace. If you had one for your project, it would be called Volk your projects. Um, then you have the input and output types, and then you can name your kernels whatever you want. Uh, there's a profiler that is just Volk profile. When you build and install GNU Radio, you can run this tool and it will run through all of the kernels that we have and decide what is fast for your machine. And then write that to this file. And then when you have an application that runs, that uses Volk, it will read from that file just like F everyone is sort of used to this with FFPW. Volk will do the same thing. Uh, the dispatcher sort of decides uh, what gets used at runtime. And this is what I like to call the Zen of Volk. Uh, basically, you have ESP engineers that are writing these efficient implementations. And then uh, the build machine sort of creates these uh, files for you where these are the machines. And then your application calls the library that is made from these uh, generated files. Uh, so, similar to the profiler, there is some QA, um, and we have, there's a website that you can go on that I showed earlier is libvolk.org, and we'll show you what all, what implementations for each kernel exists uh, for each or architecture. Um, so if you're wondering what's missing or want to find out uh, if there's anything that can run faster on your machine, you can go there and try to figure it out. And let's see, so this is last. So for collaboration, essentially Volk is a, collect a collection of these nice, fast kernels that are written that people actually wrote and let you use, which is more useful than someone saying, oh, you could do that so much faster if you put in this so much effort. It actually exists and you can use it. Uh, hopefully you can use it for your projects. If you want to start off with your own thing, then do Volk mod tool. You can experiment with new architectures. There's going to be a talk on the technical conference uh, where someone added um, ARM v8 support, so that'll be good. And if you have new types of math that you want to do or new kernels, then you can add those, just submit issues or submit pull requests to uh, GitHub and then contribute those upstream. And that's basically all I have. So. Sure thing. All right. Any All right, uh, Derek, if you could come up and start getting set up. And does anybody have questions for Nathan? Or actually, yeah, mostly Nathan, since Martin and Sebastian already got questions. Oh, Michael, do you mind handing? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do yeah. this part. Sorry, we want to make sure that all the questions and answers are recorded by the uh, videographer. Hey, so, uh, so my question is, um, do you see Volk being able to make use of, of GPU sort of resources like CUDA cores or maybe, I don't, I don't know, there's probably others, I don't know others, I only know. Yeah, I actually get that question a lot. Uh, uh, no, I think I'll talk about that more on the technical track, or technical conference, uh, because I have another talk where I'm giving a development status update. The answer is, uh, I have no plans to personally do that. It's a slightly different programming model programming model than um, the Volk kernels that sort of exist right now. There's no like memory transfers or anything like that. That said, I've seen and heard of people trying to do GPU implementations in Volk. Um, I don't know how successful they were. Yeah, so one of the, the classic trade-off here is that going into a GPU, you have to do a memory transfer or data transfer, and that takes a long time. Uh, once you're there, the computation is very fast for big vectors. Um, Volk, if you're operating on the CPUs, 
then you don't have to do that. So even for very small vectors, you can still see a lot of benefit with both. Uh, whereas with GPUs, you may only see that benefit once you pass a million items in your vector size. And we actually will have a presentation here during the technical conference on custom buffers and talking about that with GPUs if you're going to be here for it. Let, let's move on. You can come see me later. <laughs>